Bust out your sweatbands and loosen up your limbs because you are about to be immersed in one of the greatest competitions of all time. What? What? No, 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 stop, stop, no, no, go away, no, stop. Now, what I'm talking about is wound healing and burn injuries. But the burn wound is like an Olympic arena filled with elite athletes. Except instead of duking it out for medals, these athletes dictate whether a patient recovers quickly or has to contend with a lifetime of disability. Within moments of the injury, they stream in from the Olympic village and the surrounding tissue. First, you have the platelets and clotting factors, blood-stopping wrestlers heaving to staunch the flow from damaged vessels. Next are the inflammatory cells. These are the boxers, punching away debris and infectious agents. Then the true stars make their appearance, the fibroblasts and the skin cells. The fibroblasts are the decathletes. They do a little bit of everything, shot putting collagen, throwing out growth factors, and pulling the wound edges closer together. The skin cells are the sprinters, the you skin bolts, if you will, dashing in to cover up the wound. The fibroblasts and skin cells are pitched in a great race. Both need to perform well for effective healing, but we, we are firmly on team skin cell. Why? Because we have skin in the game. See, if the skin cells fall behind and take too long to cover the wound, the fibroblasts take a victory lap, spiking down more and more collagen. What often results is a permanent scar. And for children especially, scarring can be a major burden affecting their psychological and physical development. Take the case of Jack, an avid rugby player who at a young age sustained a burn to his neck that resulted in severe scarring. Over the years, Jack continued to grow, but the scar tissue couldn't keep up. He had to undergo multiple reconstructive operations because the scar was making him strain to even look up to see the rugby ball in the air. So how can we improve outcomes for children like Jack? Well, in my research, I've identified two beneficial treatments. The first is appropriately first aid, consisting of 20 minutes of cool running water. This basic intervention serves as a referee, maintaining order in the wound arena and thereby decreasing wound depth and accelerating healing. The second is a vacuum-based dressing called negative pressure wound therapy. In a clinical trial I performed, negative pressure accelerated healing and reduced the risk of long-term scar management. It did so by acting like a hybrid cleanup crew and coach, keeping the path clear for the skin cells and pushing them to victory. In the fierce race that is burn wound healing, first aid and negative pressure might just give the skin cells and our young patients a competitive edge. They're another step closer to ensuring that children like Jack can look up without difficulty and look ahead to a future without scarring. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cody, for your talk. Uh, it was a very interesting topic. I have a question, I have a, a curiosity. I don't know if you can uh, know something about these. I'm always very curious about what we learn in science in general uh, from animals, from nature. And some animals and some uh, creatures in in our environment have a very good uh, have very good are very good at healing themselves. I'm not thinking Wolverine right now, but more similar to us animals. So, are we in medicine or in science learning from animals on how to uh, heal better, how to heal ourselves better? You know, that is an excellent question, and I actually love this topic because a lot of wound healing studies. Uh, actually do uh, involve animal models. And that can be a little tricky because it can uh, provide a lot of useful information to develop new therapeutics. But there are some major differences between the animal models that are used to develop these new therapies and humans themselves. So if you look at the bulk of the animal model studies that are used um, or uh, that have been conducted in order to study burn wound healing, uh, they're actually done in mice and in rats. And mice and rats differ substantially in terms of how they heal compared to humans. They have an additional layer uh, underneath their normal skin called the paniculus carnosis. And this actually contributes to contraction of the wound. So you know how I talked about the fibroblasts and the skin cells? You know, 
They're not as much of a contributor to wound healing in the mice and the rats as they are to humans because the paniculus carnosis actually contracts the wound and that's the primary mechanism by which these animals uh, actually heal. Uh, and so using these animal models in order to develop the new treatments uh, isn't always very helpful. And that's why we found that a lot of the treatments that have shown promise in these animal models have turned out to be a bust in humans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, Cody. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to present to us. I had a question about what the negative pressure um, dressing, I think you mentioned. Could you tell us a little bit about what that means and how it works? Yeah, absolutely. So it's called negative pressure wound therapy, and it uses a pump to apply a vacuum to the wound environment. And this is hypothesized to improve healing um, by exerting uh, a number of different effects on the local wound environment. And uh, most of these fall into four broad camps, or as I like to call them, the four S's. So stretch, suck, shield, and stimulate. Stretch, they stretch the wound margins closer together, Suck, they remove uh, uh, swelling from the environment, and by doing that, they decrease compression of the blood vessels. And by decreasing compression of the blood vessels, they improve the flow of nutrients and oxygen to those healing cells that need it. Shield, because it shields it, the wound from the external environment and maintains a nice human environment for those healing cells. And then stimulate, uh, there's actually evidence that it acts on the wound bed and sets off chemical cascades that, re that result in the release of growth factors, improving the production of skin cells and of blood vessels. Thank you so much.